mapping, uh, surveillance, and the uses are enormous. And uh, there are some studies conducted also that it can contribute to uh, increasing the India's GDP as well. As for the drone rules which were issued uh, last year, Indian airspace for drone flying is segregated into three airspaces, that is green, yellow, and red. So for any drone operator which want to fly in green zone up to 400 feet, it does not require to take permission from uh, ATC, not even from Ministry of Civil Aviation. It just need to take drone insurance and just start flying a type certified drone with a valid UN number. But uh, when for commercial U.S. operation or drone operation, we sometimes have to fly more than 400 feet in green zone or maybe in the vicinity of uh, airport, which is up to the 12 kilometer uh, range from any runway. Then we require to take permission from the Ministry of Civil Aviation or the airport uh, ATC uh, to coordinate and to seek permission so that a drone cannot collide with a manned aircraft or it should be, uh, it will not collide with any other unmanned aircraft. So ATC roles become prominent. So right now this industry is at a very nascent stage and uh, most of the operations right now people are conducting are in green zone. But when we have to do uh, pipeline inspection, we have to do uh, power, uh, power line inspection, maybe inspection of uh, uh, various areas from one state to another state we have to do then definitely uh, green zones, uh, every zone will not be a green zone. Red zone or yellow zone will definitely come and in that we require data. We need to analyze the data for, our, uh, for the result. So in this regard, Asteria Aerospace, which is primarily a manufacturing or a drone operator, uh, developed a SOP. Uh, so right now, thing is that for the manned aviation, there is a concept how to coordinate with the ATC, which is well documented. Infrastructure is there. But for the unmanned aircraft, uh, government is working on a UTM policy uh, and UTM platform and the UTM infrastructure as well, so that a drone pilot can coordinate. But till now, as on date, we don't have an infrastructure in place, so we can coordinate with the ATC. So in this regard, we are very hopeful that uh, Airport Authority of India, Ministry of Civil Aviation, DGC are proactively working on developing this uh, UTM platform. Uh, but till the time, we don't have that platform. And today, we, if you want to fly in yellow zone or red zone, we have developed this SOP. So in this SOP, we divided the unmanned aircraft operation into four phases. Uh, that is planning phase, pre-flight phase, in-flight phase, post-flight phase. And we have defined the responsibility of our drone pilot and drone operator and the nearest ATC. So when we define the roles and responsibility in the planning phase, very important for a drone operator right now, uh, because uh, right now we don't have a, even the professional training seminars to how to coordinate with the ATC. So for this SOP, we defined the rules uh, of an operator. Uh, so for, uh, for this SOP, in the planning phase, they have to prepare the detailed description of the concept of operation. What will be the timing of the operation? When it will fly? Uh, uh, what kind of flight it will fly? whether uh, permission from Ministry of Civil Aviation is there or from Ministry of Home Affairs is there, uh, whether the product is uh, fit to fly in Indian sky, whether it has a valid UIN number, etc. And uh, what is a valid zone in which uh, the operation need to be undertaken, whether green zone, yellow zone, red zone, whether the operator has uh, uh, developed a hazard identification and risk management analysis, uh, then we have to plan schedule, we have to share the plan schedule of the test flight uh, for the uh, next seven days uh, with the ATC so that they can understand where you will be flying, what kind of operation will be flying. Because uh, drone operations are uh, mostly done by the quadcopter. And you don't go from, sometimes you don't even go from point A to point B, you just fly at the same point, uh, for example, tower inspection. 
from a uh, you're just going from uh, ground to top and you're not even changing the position so such uh, details should need to be discussed with the atc then most important thing is that uh, we have to submit a fpl form to the nearest atc uh, to get their feedback and see when the process was submitting the form and also obtain fic and adc number from the concerned unit uh in manned aviation it looks very simple that uh, fpl form but in unmanned aviation uh we uh, in, in fact a drone pilot uh, the eligibility to uh, get a become a drone pilot is that you have to be 10 plus pass it is not required that you are from an engineering background uh and only with a 5 day course from a dgs certified rpto you become a drone pilot so uh, we have to discuss how a drone pilot will submit a fpl form <coughs> then uh, in the planning phase we also need to discuss about the training of drone pilots what additional training requirements are there because in 5 day uh, training which is a very basic training about how to fly a bird or drone uh we cannot expect that he will be able to uh, coordinate with the atc we have to identify then we have to uh, ensure that every uh, crew member is aware about the drone rules uh, manufacturing operating manual and what are the checklists given by the manufacturer uh, how to establish the voice communication between the atc and uh, remote pilot in command uh, problem is that uh, uh, as a civilian we are not authorized to use the a uh, satellite phone or any other communication so only way of coordinating with the atc at present right now is to coordinate via mobile phone uh information regarding the drone operation to be provided to the nearest aerodrome control room of private sector uh then based on the information provided by a drone operator uh then it's a responsibility of the nearest atc to access the feasibility of the operations at the controlled airspace without affecting the flight operation Uh, as of now we have uh, uh, we plan to conduct operation in western part of the country so we got feedback because the drone is a new uh, emerging field and even in the atc also they don't have experience about how to control the unmanned uh, traffic and the manned uh, traffic the simple way was that uh, during the non atc watch hours it will be feasible that a drone operation can take place uh so uh, right now uh, the moment uh, we'll get type certificate and we'll be starting approaching the more atc across the country we'll also get to know ki what are the uh, issues faced by atc and all the also the drone pilots uh then after receiving the fpl form uh, how uh, the atc will submit the uh, drone operation to the nearest asl in, in initiate no time action uh, will be the responsibility of the atc and then uh so when the planning phase is over which is uh, doing planning doing mock drills doing discussion over paper then there comes a stage of pre flight phase uh so uh, it is advisable that uh, we inform the atc before uh, two uh, working days for seeking approval and submit the fpl form over email uh to the atc at least 24 hours in advance and uh, so that the atc can submit the flight plan uh, to the concerned atf unit through emss uh also uh, during the pre flight uh, just like uh, normal man aviation a pilot takes the uh, uh, imd uh, take uh, weather briefing med briefing so a drone pilot is also required uh, to get the med briefing uh, obtain adc and fic number from the nearest ecil and mlu and submit the same to the atc before commencing drone operation thing is that we don't have any access to online platform uh, for uh, uh, platform on uh, airport authority of india to submit the fpl form uh, unmanned aircraft operators cannot uh, register on that website so we don't have an online platform where we can connect with various stakeholders in adc so only thing is that we do we do, do get only landline numbers so it become a challenge uh, we also need to ensure as a drone operator if uh, the atc want the real time position uh, of the aircraft 
uh, unmanned aircraft, it should be provided to them. Uh, as of now, with the help of the technology from the ground control station, these coordinates can be shared. Uh, then, uh, then based on uh, such thing, uh, uh, then uh, ro role of ATC point number nine obtain no time number from no time office automation system and transmit the information to the drone operator. Uh, the ATC may uh, suspend RP operation at any time due to air traffic emergency or operational requirement. Uh, in the SOP which we formed, uh, we uh, made a detailed procedure about in-flight phase. Uh, so what are the areas when the emergency should be there? So immediately during in-flight, uh, the flight should be commenced only after taking ATC clearance. Uh, for drone flights, it's always advisable to operate in good weather condition as discussed with the ATC. Uh, strictly operate within the limit of area bounded as well flight plan and drone operating area. So the technology, uh, the drone technology allows the drone pilot to restrict uh, geofencing as possible so that the even though pilot want to take outside uh, the geofencing area, the flight will not go. So one of the important responsibility of uh, operator during the in-flight phase is to immediately notify the ATC via voice call as early as possible if there is deviation from the desired path, fly away, maybe wind, maybe some technology issues, close encounter with manned aircraft, mid-air collision with an uh, manned aircraft, crash of the RPA on the ground, and the RTA, uh, ATC may suspend RPA drone operation at any time due to air traffic emergency or operational requirements. Uh, then post flight, uh, uh, so if any accident happen, uh, then the operator may submit a report to the DGCA, ATC and other concerned uh, agencies. And uh, based on the report submitted, the ATC may take a call whether they should allow the next flight or suspend the flight. One of our important responsibilities of the remote pilot in command will be uh, because he is the first point of contact for ATC and emergency uh, response, emergency services. It's very important because he has to conduct emergency response plan, walk through to remote crew. He, need, he is the overall coordinator uh, on ground and is also responsible for flight safety. He is also, uh, he has to ensure that uh, the safety gadgets are there on site, such as fire extinguisher, first aid kit, safety vest, uh, flashlight, power bank, uh, etc. <coughs> uh, so right now in the in our SOP, we have tried to detail out what is the suggested emergency response plan uh, for the training flavors for a remote pilot. So uh, in that briefing. It is very important to highlight what is the intent with the uh, emergency response plan. When normal abnormal emergency SORA procedure trigger the ERP, uh, how to access the last known uh, position of the crashing drone, saving the position information in a stress situation, entering the last known position information into navigation application on a phone, ensuring sufficient power to mobile devices used in the search. Uh, so these young pilots uh, many times face such issues so it's the responsibility of the remote pilot in command to brief them properly about how they can safely manage the so for this training is required as of now there is no school where we can send these pilots so it's the responsibility of the drone operator to develop this course and uh, uh, train their pilots so what kind of phases need to be used uh, to declare emergencies in um, uh, in manned division, there are detailed books uh, which talks about what are the codes, what are the phases that need to be used for uh, various things. Uh, then list of contact information, uh, how to manage that information, how to get for each and everything. How to simulate an emergency situation before actually flying. Uh, if any emergency happen, how to uh, do a mock drill. Uh, so in this PPT, basically, I thought ki, uh, some 
some of my friends from unmanned industry would be here so they might benefit from how to uh, submit a, a fill a spl form Uh, because uh, for manned aircraft, uh, they are pretty much defined in ICUA uh, guidelines and books. Uh, but for drones, submitting a FPL form is not very much defined. Uh, when we look at aircraft identification, uh, in this, uh, uh, as per the guidelines, it has to be alf uh, alpha, uh, alphabet or numerical. So how a drone need to be done? So. Then most of the drone flights we have to submit the uh, reason being uh, it has to be flown in a nice and clear weather condition. Then most of the type of flight for a drone will fall under X category because X stands for everything else. Uh, it will not fall under S which is scheduled air service and for non uh, should a transport operation g for general aviation and for military then uh, most of the information uh, uh, which is required in, in this form a drone operator or drone pilot will not be able to provide then he can uh, add z z z uh, or zulu 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 and add this information, further information in uh, box number 18. Then vague turbulence category, uh, most of the time uh, it will fall under L category because it is light category less than 7,000 kg. Uh, it is very important. Uh, in fact, uh, when my when we were filling this form, most of my uh, colleagues who are pilots were not able to fill this. We, we scratched our head how uh, we will fill this form. Then we got to know that there are alphabets uh, which stand for equipment. Uh, and But most of the things are relevant for manned aviation, but not for unmanned. So, uh, so G, GNS is one of our equipment which is basically uh, every time uh, present in a drone, so at least a G can be mentioned. Then again, Z, 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 if the information is not there, we can add the information in box number 18. Uh, time is a 24-hour format, HH, MM format. H stands for uh, R, M for minute. Uh, cruising speed, uh, uh, it can be in N nautical miles or K for kilometer per hour. And for a drone, uh, it will be more relevant uh, to add the information in K. Okay, and uh, here we can see that the speed of the cruising speed of the drone is 38 km per hour. So in this level, we can read it is uh, above altitude 400 feet. Again, uh, Z, 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 Z information is not there for a drone. So it is the total estimated uh, in route time, uh, how much time a drone flight is to be, uh, flight will be there in the air. Uh, then it is the uh, same HHMM format. Alternate aerodrome and second alternate aerodrome, aerodrome Z, Z, Z. Uh, so uh, when we look at the form, uh, the first part was mandatory, and this part is not sent to, uh, is not transmitted in FPL message. So we can, as per the ICU guidelines, we can easily uh, select key, what is the endurance time, and what are the gadgets available we have, we or we don't have. We can cross them. We, uh, and most important thing is that uh, for a drone flight, uh, we can just uh, mark what are the aircraft color. Uh, and name of the pilot in command. So, uh, with this, we, I would like to request the Airport Authority of India. Till the time the ATC, uh, there's a mechanism to develop the ATC via Digital Sky is developed, the Airport Authority of India can allow Indian drone operators to submit online FPL form because as of now, there's no provision where any 
drone operator can submit the FPL form. Uh, we also seek support from the Airport Authority of India to obtain FIC and ADC number from the concerned units. Uh, partner with drone operators and organize some mock drills for the select RP, IC across the country because these, uh, we uh, technically, uh, theoretically we now know ki how to coordinate with the ADC but practical experience is very limited. So in this, uh, if mock drills across the country can be organized, it will be much beneficial for the emerging drone industry. <coughs> And uh, we would request uh, if some um, allow operators in uh, some airport, no, I'm not talking about very hectic airport like Mumbai, etc., uh, where uh, some drone operation along with manned aircraft can be undertaken in uh, ATC watch hours because right now, uh, right now most of the airports are thinking of allowing drone operations in non-ATC watch hours. Uh, thank you everyone. With this, I have come to end of my presentation. And I know uh, uh, we have very new, we have very limited experience in, uh, in coordinating with the uh, uh, air traffic controller. But uh, with your vast experience, we would be happy that uh, to the drone industry, you can provide your valuable feedback, guidance, so that this operation can be, because we have to now fly in yellow zones if we want India to become a global superpower. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for the amazing presentation. Now I would request uh, Shibu Agis from India Medium to present the memento to so. Okay, now going ahead in the seminar, we would like to have the presentation on helicopter operation. This is the last presentation of the seminar. So going ahead in the event, the last presentation on helicopter operation by Sutton Aviation. Let's give them a big round of applause. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, okay, first thing is uh, my presentation is on, uh, I'm from Chipson Aviation. A general introduction on the Chipson Aviation is here given below. Uh, we are a company based in uh, mainly in Delhi, but our major operations are in South India. We are one of the largest helicopter operators in the southern part of India, operating out of Bangalore and Cochin. Uh, this is the line of activity. We do most of the non-scheduled air operator, air charter aggregator, airport management, aircraft management sales, air ambulance, heli tourism, aviation consultancy. Okay, for that matter, that helipad, what you see is the Garuda helipad in uh, Kerala. Okay, this is our helipad. Okay, more to the motto is given that we established in 2010. And uh, representatives are Mr. Uh, Sunil uh, Katundi Narayan, ex Air Force, and uh, she is uh, Daisy Charya. These are our clientele general across the spectrum. Okay, the, the type of uh, aircraft what we have, you can see there are two Bell 407s, both owned, and uh, the H135 P2, that is an owned aircraft. The most modern is the uh, H145D3, uh, I'm proud to say this is one of the most modern helicopters in India today, as of today. And uh, many of you would have seen the news and all, there were a lot of news about the 100 crore helicopter, and this is the 100 crore helicopter one we are talking about. And the one below is the H145D2, which we are uh, managing, aircraft management, basically for the Lulu group, we are managing it for the Lulu group. Okay, the fleet, what you can see, this is the H145 hours and this is the Bell 407. And we do, at, at times, we take uh, AW 109 from uh, some other companies on a lease. 
Okay, this is the ACH one four five D three. This is the first Mercedes Benz style helicopter in India. We have the seven seater with an air conditioner. Uh, and what do you say the fridge in between? The helicopter you can see it's just been imported uh, less than a year from Germany. And uh, I am one of the pilots of the. I am the chief pilot for the one four five eight. Okay, to the helipads generally managed. You can see the whole list. We do have two uh, elevated helipads in India, in especially in this area, the ITC Gardenia and the Infosys is the two helipad, elevated helipads. The rest of them, what you can see out here, we are we manage a lot of helipads. Some of them are owned by us or on lease. Okay. Okay. Now a short introduction of myself. Uh, my introduction. I am uh, Captain Sunil. Spent uh, 24 years in Indian Air Force, mainly flying. Uh, Some fighter flying and uh, mostly helicopter flying. Flown all along India, including the Kargil War, and uh, did some UN operations in the Congo, and uh, left uh, Air Force somewhere in 2016. Flew for JNK government for some years, flying in the civil uh, Dagusta 109, and uh, the latest time flying the H145D3. I am an examiner on both the types. Okay, now coming to the challenges of helicopter operation and how a controller can help. On a lighter note, I was telling uh, some people that the challenges of helicopter operations are the last of the priorities given to the helicopter. I am sure there are a lot of controllers here. Like today's case, the last presentation is for a helicopter pilot. Okay, including the pilot interaction is over and the helicopter pilot is here. So this is a this is the this is the priority given to helicopter by. Many of you ATC controllers, whom I I can't see, but we always hear. Okay, so this is the priority given to helicopter pilot. With that, I continue with the presentation. I'll just read through some of the things. Some of the things I'll ask in the end. I'll what I'll do is uh, I'll take out my perchi and uh, I'll give some situations where to introspect from your side as a controller. Could you have helped me? Could you have not helped me? Okay. First of all, the aircraft rules. PIC is always in command, responsible, and final authority for the safe operation of the aircraft. But in an emergency situation, he can deviate. But finally, it is he is responsible to inform the ATC controller that he is deviating at the earliest. The key to safe helicopter operation is to understand the helicopter with its limitation and advantages. This is the like most important. Thing challenge what we as a helicopter pilot or a helicopter fraternity is facing these days. We all spoke so much. Did anybody think of helicopter in that management? So many people made photographs, but no one thinks about helicopters. The last priority given. That was the same thing. So under nobody can understand the importance, requirement, and the capability of a helicopter. We only think of a helicopter. Flood has come. We need a helicopter. Then you start running around. Or fire has come, you need some fire to be dropped, the water to be dropped. Then you start looking for helicopter. Some emergency ambulance requirement, then you start looking for helicopter. Otherwise, nobody thinks about it. Huh? Uh, election time. Election time. All politicians start looking for helicopter. Yeah. The word aircraft denotes both aeroplane and helicopter. However, there is a huge, literally huge difference between an aeroplane and helicopter. There is a huge difference. I don't know how many of you understand that difference is the most important thing for an ATC controller or for a pilot. Okay, as a growing, I just want to tell. While doing my conversion in Airbus last year, I was told the H one four five D three which I am flying, the avionics are better than even an Airbus three twenty. It was it is equal to an Airbus three eight zero. How many of you know? I don't know. But you still consider us as a normal helicopter, a 407 doesn't have anything. Same thing. But we have gone much, much, much ahead. But many of you controllers don't even understand that we have even ADSB capabilities with us. We have an HTOS with us. We have uh, all the uh, what do you say, traffic collision avoidance systems with us. Our network. But still, we are considered helicopters, slow moving platform. Even at 140 by 150 knots, when I am doing an approach. I have a slow-moving platform, so I am given the last of the priority. Just keep staying out, stay out, stay out. 
Helicopters cannot hover everywhere. That is again what I want to say that. Limitations of helicopter, many people don't understand. If I am loaded up fully, I cannot hover everywhere. I need to be within certain parameters. Yes, that is there. But, but I don't have fuel to do, keep slowing down, slowing down. I need to land also. Auto, again, see sir, you don't understand that front. Now I'll try to start teaching aerodynamics. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So most of the helicopter operations, I'm sure most of you will be knowing that it takes place around 4,000 feet and below. Unlike some of us like who are in the now 145B3 and all, we do operate at much higher height. We do a lot of IFR flying. Okay. So outside control airspace, we don't have any problem. Our major problem comes in the controlled airspace where we are kept out of most of the things. Okay, helicopter operations have increased significantly. This is, this is again a point which I have a paradox, I mean, I would say a paradox. It has not actually gone up so much. Somewhere around maybe 10 years back, the number of helicopters which were there, 10, 15 years back. In fact, it dipped bad, very badly because of the regulations and controls. Now it is picking up. Slowly, a lot of helicopters coming up. But again, I'm sure there are, there's a friend of mine who spoke about drones earlier. Now, with the drones coming again, there will be interaction in the airspace. Finally, airspace is limited. How many people can operate? Okay, so where is the problem? The slow, slow moving helicopter. Okay, how do you interact? How do you integrate it with the fixed wing? Even when there is so much of space, much of, so much of clarity coming up in the airspace, some controllers do understand, but some of the airline staff, airline pilots don't understand that. They keep giving, keep giving calls, there is an aircraft, there is an aircraft, but he's far away. So it is not only the controller's uh, point of view who has to understand, it is even the airlines have to understand that fact. Okay, IFR rules. Now we have entered, were developed and refined over. Most of the IFR procedures are developed for the fixed wing, whereby like a case of a Delhi, a Delhi, or talk about here. How many controllers in BIL would allow a helicopter to do an IFR, I have ILS approach here? Nobody. They'll start, now, oh shit, this helicopter has come now. What do I do? They don't want to entertain us. But in bad weather, I do need to land. How do I land? So these procedures which have been made for fixed swing, whereby the approach starts maybe even at 25 miles. Can a helicopter land at 25 miles? Okay, I'll ask question to the controllers here. What is the general speed of a helicopter? Any controller? You're all talking about 250 knots of a fixed wing and all that. Very nice. Yeah, people are knowing. I'm so happy to hear this actually speaking. I'm very, very happy. So 120 knots is 2 nautical miles in a minute. So if I had to start at 25 nautical miles, how many minutes? 12 minutes. 13 minutes. Can you allow that time to me? No. So what do I do? You need to cut me inside. Maybe as a, as a radar controller, you need to take me a shorter route. Shorter route. People do it. In Delhi, I see most of the time the league, Delhi controllers are so good. They do allow us to cut inside. I'm not saying people don't do it. They do it. Okay. See, I'll, I'll come back. Sir. I'll come back. See, there are, uh, there are airports which are really good. They do accommodate. Okay, I can talk about Delhi. I can talk about Bombay because they see helicopter operation and they have integrated helicopters nicely and they know the capability of the helicopter and some, maybe the, some of the controllers also by, maybe may not be by page, but by RT, by the call signs, they know, okay, this pilot, he can hack it. He makes it. That's also happened. Yes. That is because you need us, sir. <laughs> Northeast just need us. Huh? <laughs> but at the same time, sir, when you, but at the same time, you are talking about Calcutta. I'll tell you one story of Calcutta also. <laughs> See, I spent long, as a helicopter pilot, I'm an ex Air Force pilot, sir. I commanded also the unit in the Eastern Port, okay, in Mohanbari, Dibrugat. Okay, these controllers, they, they do understand our operations because we operate a lot. But again, to Dibrugat, I, I think there was somebody from Dibrugat who's representative. 
sometimes we have asked to maintain 15 miles away because there is an aircraft coming 15 miles away but is it is it because i i do understand your procedures your regulations are so strict maybe that as a controller you need to understand the airspace also better like we need to understand each other's airspace we need to understand the others uh, capability we many of you many of the controllers i feel the problem is because procedure controllers are on you don't understand the air, air picture what is happening around can i i am 15 miles away will i by what way will i affect anybody Exactly, sir. Sir, exactly, sir. Like uh, three weeks back, we were in Vijayawada. Okay, we were flying for the state government. And many ATC controllers flew us, with us. Okay. They were so happy. In fact, in fact, I, I told them, see, these controllers, we need to show them. The rest of the people, there were other people who I told, cut short the court. But this, with the ATC control, I flew with them long. Next year morning, I took off in between an aircraft. Because the controllers understood that thing. But your point is correct, sir. He understood what are the capabilities. I can take off in 90 degrees away also. They were so good. Vijayawada, I, I hats off to them, the controllers there. They understand the operations well. It is not everywhere, sir. It is again what I, my point is. It is controller to controller specific. There is no general spectrum. Overall, what I can say is there is a threat to pull back on the system. I understand. Yeah, good to. <laughs> okay, so that that what, what I want to say is I am not an expert on ATC. I talk from a pilot of a heli helicopter pilot in which what I want as an ATC guild, as an ATC pilot, what can you give me? Even rules and regulations we need to improve. Now drones are coming. I am not saying still have the control of that old uh, British era rules. We need to. See, that's what I'm saying, sir. Our aircraft, most of the helicopters are with transponders. We have even ADSB capability. I don't know how many people are know it. Everything is visible, sir. Still, you keep me away. Everything is visible. Then why do you still keep away? Okay. Yeah, so this is the last point everybody can read through if you can see. It. Pilots flying in complex airspace have an expectation of controllers responsibility in certain airspace types. That is not supported by aviation regularity. Classy airspace and along helicopter routes. Okay, similarly, it is at cause on their part, follow control procedures, mainly devised for control of fast moving aircraft. This variation between pilot perception of controller responsibility and vice versa have effects with this controller. What I perceive, what I want is not your perception. But if we can come together to maybe even uh, better for a better it, things will things will work better finally we are all burning fuel which is a national wastage it's it's our national resource which we are burning finally understand that okay problem areas the what i told helicopter capability many people don't understand the capability of a helicopter flight and velocity speed altitude endurance range weather limits all of it okay i'll tell you one now I'll just, one minute, sir, I'll just tell you an incident of mine. Okay. Election flying we were talking about, sir. We were flying in Himachal, into the Kangda Valley. Inside the Kangda Valley, I had, was coming back with the Himachal CM. Weather was bad. I had screwed around a lot and finally landed at a helipad very close to Kangda Airport. From there, it was six minutes, six miles to the Kangda Airport. I had fuel to reach the Kangda Airport. When I was getting airborne, I got airborne. And the controller told me, no, you cannot land now. Orbit. I told him I don't have fuel. You know. When I landed, he was raising an issue. I mean, he was telling, I'll report it to DGCA. This thing. Then I asked him why. He told, you should have had fuel to divert. I asked to divert where? Divert to Chandigarh, which is 100 miles away. Is it practical, sir? This is the knowledge of the controller that time. And he was making a big issue to me. I told, I told how do I, how do you, this is the knowledge. How do you expect for six miles, he expects me to have 100 100 uh, nautical mile uh, diversion fuel. And whereas helicopters, we fly many of the helicopters at a very, we are not, our margins are 600 kg, 700 kg, that is the whole thing of, if you take the traffic load, including fuel also. So I am playing with figures like that. 50 kg, 100 kg of fuel. Can I take that fuel extra like that? 
I have to land at altitude, high altitude, 10,000 feet. When I land at the high altitude, the load carry capability will reduce further. So what happens? I have to carry the same number of passengers. So I reduce the fuel. One way is I position the fuel there. I don't know whether if many of you are known or not. We carry fuel in our bouses. I mean, tankers, they come, they will give us fuel there. So this is how we operate. Okay, long taxis. I had a time in Delhi airport, sir. Delhi airport. Three, four kilometers of taxi on a helicopter with a small wheel like that. Four kilometers from uh, 27 runway to, not, to the general aviation apron. Four kilometers. By the time I was, that wheels were giving away, finally I asked, so enough is enough. I came up, I did a hover, I did an air taxi. See, whereas I could have been made to land at nearby a place. No. But Delhi do approach. These days, Delhi is very good. They make us land very close to the general aviation apron. Okay. It is not, maybe it is one more time that happened. Okay, landing in tailwind. I don't know whether many of you are aware or not, ATC controllers, that we do have a very strict limitations on the tailwind in many of the helicopters. Okay, so we try as far as possible to land into a headwind because, again, power or all the things. So if it is possible, we would like to land in a headwind condition. Like, like our, our aircraft, we have some, some, some problems, like if I want to start up immediately, if I'm on a tailwind condition, it gives some problems to me. At, well, at times, I do ask, can I land and facing into the wind? Even if it is possible, sometimes I am told no. People do need to understand the problems of helicopter. Being asked to maintain low altitude with close proximity or terrain and obstacles. Classic cases, Bombay, if I say, the kilo routes of Bombay, some of the routes, you will be, if, uh, that's what, some of the ATC controller who are defined, defined it should fly with us. When you see the crane above you, Okay, and the height of the buildings are going up and up. It is not going down now. In India, the infrastructure is going, height is going and up and up. But our high, helicopter height is maintained the same. Okay, special VFR operations, difficulty in some airports. What I want to say is like a airport like Kadapa. Anybody is from the Kadapa area? Kadapa or from Puttaporthi. I recently I flew in Puttaporthi. The Puttaputti, I think, doesn't have a control zone or some, some problem is there. You are there, no? No. Oh, Chennai said somebody had come. Yeah. Kadappa. Huh. So there is no, I think, I think it doesn't have a control zone or something. So, special VFR is not permitted. That means any time below 5 kilometers, I cannot take off. That is exactly what I am saying. That is exactly what I am saying. So, if I just below 5 kilometers, no. But what is my capability? I can, as a class... Performance class one helicopter, I can take off in one kilometer visibility. So, am I getting? But let us say I make a I make a smart move. I land uh, at a field just just outside the just outside the airfield. Means just outside means on the boundary one. I can take off from there. So, how is it justified? Similarly, for Kadapa, we were ferrying from uh, which place? Uh, somewhere, I think, uh, Vijayawada. I had to come to Kadappa and then refuel and come here because range was seen. Kadappa told me very clearly, sir, you cannot land here if you don't have 5 km visibility. Why? Because I don't have control. I don't know, so please check it out. I was told that. My, my operator told me. And, and similarly for Shimla and all, I think they say in San Chandigarh and all that. Now comes this, see, what, now most of the airfield separation minima, what I was telling, most of us have got now transponder capability. You can see us, advanced avionics capability with the, almost the helicopters. Helicopter transit at low levels through control zone. Okay, this I'll give it an ex ex example. I was flying from Cochin airport to Mangalore, but we were low because weather was bad. Calicut Airport was reporting 4 km visibility. Special VFR asked, told, okay, clear to fly it, clear in special VFR and control zone. I was at 1,000 feet. I asked him to transit at 11 nautical mile on his takeoff path. 
there was an aircraft joining ayala he told me no i told him permission to descend to 500 feet 11 miles away along the coast i mean slightly into the sea he told me no orbit finally after three four times of haggling around finally allowed me i don't know why how can a fixed wing on an approach even on an approach and even if he goes around can he ever reach 11 miles me 500 feet is it possible so again it is there are controllers who allowed me to go also there are some controllers told no as per i think is regulation it is not permitted i don't know because i asked him he told me 15 nautical miles and 15 nautical miles i was getting into the sea in that monsoon time when you see the sea swell coming to your view it is not a that is a controllers if somebody flies with me you'll understand how scary is to fly over a sea at 500 feet in a in a monsoon time with a cloud black cloud on top and a black sea in between so understand us okay direct routes as far as possible please because of range limitation please give direct route please give because many of us are we have very very strict range limitation rt repeater because many of the helicopter pilots fly at low route uh, it is very difficult to get rt but we do utilize some things like if somebody is at height we ask rt and do it election flying sir that what we are talking about since election flying comes under atc also atc is also a lot of them involved i don't know any, anybody from patna patna atc yes sir you are aware of that accident last election what happened okay because you see the okay i will not blame the a for also that but you see the space constraint there are no proper markings uh, gadda on the side we are just trying to save them so as far as possible in election flying and all please do give as far as possible try to give good space good marking non scheduled marking but at least some markings we can be there during the election before the election okay sir this is okay separate corridors in i'm sure most of you know the kilo routing is beautiful delhi has got the routing okay it's more of a visual route but pilots are aware of it and airport the controllers are aware and they do we do adjust bangalore has got a routing the the routing what we have this many of the airports don't have this type of routing if you can uh, get a routing uh, like that it will be very good for the helicopter industry whereby we are all able, i mean like in bangalore i take off from my helipad very close to hcl airport i just follow the route i am not troubling anybody i just follow the route i get to get to wherever i go provide procedural flexibilities traffic flow okay over taxi tma okay sir this is all ATC system is called random route operation. Uh, VHF links try to have repeaters more. Where helicopters must be merged with conventional aircraft and instrument approach. This is what I'm saying. Shorter arc. The biggest takeaway I feel is understand the capability and limitations of a helicopter. And now, two, three. Today, the importance of drones. Two or three uh, topics. Uh, ben, uh, ben, uh, lectures were conducted on the drone how do you how are you planning to do the drone operation along with helicopters and another slow moving aircraft is a big challenge in india to tell you sir to take off let us say from for me from my vaidehi helipad which is 3 miles from hr airport to kempagoda international is a scary thing i have to make hundreds of calls please can i do this can i do this how do you adjust with the drones i don't know that's also the rest i think uh, uh, thank you for uh, helping us out i am not saying that ki all everything is negative we do have lot of people who try to help us uh, many many atcs do help us in uh, taking off in different direction understanding and all that and uh, my air force friends are here uh, i was telling somebody uh, the how to control how, how should a uh, civil air traffic controller know how to carry out helicopter operation is just ask them we they are so good at that integrating fixed wing helicopter everything i am sure some of you have gotten attachment or some of you might have seen some of them who have come and uh, done i understand that is what i'm saying try to integrate the procedure so that is what i'm saying sir 
we can have procedures i can all everybody can have procedure but procedures are for integration into the other system so that's one thing that we need to change my point is change sir my point is change my my point is change you, you are bound by regulations sir but haven't dgc changed sir haven't things changed like i can tell yesterday only i was i was in dgc for a examiner's interview sir i was told i was asked the same question has in the change yes there is change sir we have we had we had simple thing like a provision to check it was 6 months earlier now it has become one year things have changed sir the big change sir six months to one year so we need integration from all the sides my point is that sir for a safe finally helicopters also need to come up lot of importance of helicopters sir now with uh, so many roads coming up kept picking up uh, passengers picking up casualties i have finished any uh, sir you are wanted to speak sir yes and thank you i'll i I'll, i'll be here somewhere here you can Mr. Sunil, as you were presenting us with the very good slides, showing all your problems, all your difficulties while while flying to any of the busy airports, I would like to, on the ATC perspective, I'd like, I'd like to say few few things. As in one of your slides, you were showing that kilo routes for Bombay. Actually, in all metros, we have we have incorporated. If you have flown to Calcutta, also we have kilo routes for Calcutta also. and the other thing what you were telling the helicopter is the last priority no sir it's not all the time we wanted to push, push helicopter well before all the bigger aircraft like airbus boeing because of its maneuvering we can tell turn left right report clear of take off path we can allow other other departure so at times will you feel that while departing you will be delayed in each point of time sir okay this is what i was saying exactly it is again there is no standardization on this matter it is again depend on the perception of the controller individuality of the controller okay you are from calcutta sir i was flying in calcutta in uh, the month of april or may i was on ifr flight plan from calcutta to bhubaneswar i had to haggle a lot because they were asking me to go into that route with through that sea and i don't have a capability to go so much into the sea literally i am afraid of going so much into the sea in a, in a helicopter like that without a float so i spoke to my friends in air force and kkd i spoke with them haggle with them everything i did and they also agreed okay clear do it through the through their air space i have a flight plan you won't believe i still have the photograph i was between 10 <laughs> jumbo jet size aircraft and i was trying to hover to carry out i have a flight but i asked them can i do an intersection take off can you allow me in between don't know i wasted more than 25 minutes and i was literally worried do i have to come back to the tarmac because my fuel was also getting slightly tense okay sir remember so it has happened as a knee it has happened no it happens it, it has happened because of the circumstances yes and, and that is what i am telling sorry, you sir actually i must say the controller helped me but i took off then i was with the air, air force air space some controller has again changed their in air force he was asking me to go through the other route again now again i am trying to haggle maybe my air force interactions earlier and how to speak to the air force controller i could haggle it i could get back to the track again so it is all individual stick what that is my point that is what uh, i am not i am not saying sir i am what i want to say is there are a lot of controllers among you you help us out sir not but many people stick to the regulations which are very very strict which tightens the whole situation no, that is correct as ah. you said you have filed a flight plan like ifr ah. and you were asking asking us to give the routing direct or whatever and you have flown through kkd and we were given Land, landed at that's the thing that is what i am telling you we, sir if you have filed you, you have taken that was thing we have been i have been given but only thing my my only grudge on that day was i could have been made to take off in between i i was there was no need for me to stand between that 10 number behind that fixed wing that 
Air, Airbus class of aircraft. My only grudge is that. Otherwise, sir, fantastic job by the Calcutta airport. No, no, that no, no, sir. We appreciate. Actually, we we have seen Dauphin. Dauphin is more like a yes. Boeing 737 of a helicopter. Yes, sir. It always helps us. So we try to accommodate. If at all you have felt any kind of uh, difficulty, sir, whatever difficulties are there, we are always there to help you. You fly more because your flyings are very less. That's why it is being not in our blood, because like our scheduled departure arrival. If you fly more, we'll definitely provide you better service. Yes, isn't it? Yes. And and last part, I don't want to prolong this discussion. As you said, this is this was your last presentation. You were given last chance. No, no, it's not a last chance. It's not a lighter note. No, no, don't this, worry. Is, this is the great <laughs> beginning of this evening. You know, <laughs> it's not a lighter note. Yeah. Don't worry. I Thank also you. came late. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I, I want to say this one more last point. I would just want to say in IFR routes, IFR flight plan, when we file, we don't face too much a problem, actually speaking, because you people are used to the IFR setup. But when it comes to the VFR thing, integrating with IFR it creates problem because visualization of the system is problem. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. I would like to invite Anup to hand our moment to sir. Sir, this So we need to change the procedure, incorporate, incorporate the helicopter procedures into ATM. Uh, we'll do it. We'll discuss with all the stakeholders. They have kept their point very well at the right platform. Now, I would like to invite a distinguished guest who has come all over the way from Nepal Civil Aviation Authority, Mr. Nabin Acharya, who has brought one moment of our ATC Guild. Sir, please. I would like to invite the President, sir, and uh, General Secretary on stage. Prasanna, sir, please. Hello. So there is a small token of love from Nepal to Indian ATC Guild. Mr. Naveen is an active ATC looking after procedures in Nepal Civil Aviation Authority. And uh, his son is now into flying. Next year onwards, he'll be a pilot. So it's over to him. Uh, thank you. I would like to congratulate uh, ATC Guild India for their kind invitation. And I hope we should do continue this type of seminar in the future and we have to join our hand together. Thank you very much. So thank you all. So with this, we are approaching to the end of this seminar. I would like to thank all the dignitaries who have joined this seminar in person and online also to our uh, chairman and member ANS. And uh, a small token of love to all the dignitaries, distinguished dignitaries from ATC Guild India. First of all, I would like to invite uh, from BL Pushpa Madam. Please. And Shibu, sir. Please come on the stage, ma'am. Counterparts from Indian Air Force who rule the Indian sky, sir, please, on stage. There is a 
शेडगे सर प्लीज ऑल ज्वाइन ऑन द स्टेज Next is official from DGC. Please come forward. Officials from DGC. Okay, good evening, everybody. I am Group Captain J P Sabarwal. I am the Command Attaché Officer at uh, Training Command, Bangalore. And uh, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity. Uh, we were here in 2016 also when this event was organized here. So I am here to reiterate that the cooperation and the good communication that is existing between the Bangalore International Airport, the ATC fraternity, the airport operators, and everybody involved in the aviation is long-lasting and it will continue. Uh, Bangalore has been hosting Aero India for uh, 13 uh, editions so far. The next edition also is likely to be held efficiently with cooperation from everybody. Uh, uh, one thing, uh, just to add on to the uh, lecture covered by uh, Captain Sunil on the helicopters. So we have a lot of areas wherein helicopters operate in the mountainous terrain, that like uh, JNK, Uttarakhand Valley for Chardam Yatra, Amarnath Yatra, uh, Tista Valley in Sikkim, and uh, Arunachal. so we can have procedures like uh, tiba although the air force and the army aviation pilots they report position they follow a procedure akin to tiba we have our reporting points while descending climbing over the valley junction we keep reporting but nothing has been formally published so if it can be formally published in the form of a aip supplement then uh, it will you know give validity and every operator will abide by most importantly uh, is the uh, the kind of helicopter operation that place uh, take place during the chardam yatra you have uh, air force helicopters also present army aviation also and lot of uh, civil aviation helicopters so if it can be formalized uh, starting with, uh, as a you know uh, first case in uttarakhand valley i think the other valleys can also follow so thank you so much thank you sir thank you official from dgca next our counterpart uh, hr atc please come here on the stage we have uh, atc controllers from hl day and night we are coordinating with them all the inbound traffic into bangalore from southern airports are handled by hal they are in close coordination with upper chennai also upper air space as well as mumbai as well as lower air field of the southern airport and with a minimum strength of hardly 10 to 12 controllers they are handling tremendous traffic and we have here uh, all bangalore controllers must be knowing atc from vidyanagar mr prabhakar is here he is from vidyanagar atc which which is with the jsw from jetset aviation we have a representative here from jetset aviation then from again a token of love to nepal from india please on stage once again i would like to invite uh, professor padi along with his team on the stage because uh, his team has done a tremendous job for the atma of india 
and uh, Vasudevan sir, please have honor to give them a memento to the team. We had a uh, representation from airlines, I think uh, Air India, if uh, any pilot is still there. From Vistara, I think they have left, Indigo also. Then I would like to present the people behind all this hard work. I would like to invite them on stage, Anup, Kamesh, Namrata, Gitika, Sandeep, Sunny, Srijan, and Sanjay, you also. I will get you. Seeman, Neha, Prashant. And in the leadership of our president, Mr. Shibu Vargis, don't go by his age, he is sweet 16 only. Sir, please. Of course, the pillar of this, Sanjay Varma, sir. Thank you all. One thing I would like to mention here, the whole team has done a great effort from last two, three months. Please, sir, please. Pradeep, sir, you also, please. Sir. And we have two more. Pillar of Strength, Shamin, sir, and Rajiv, sir. The hero in the background. Please come, sir, please come. And Rana ji. Please come. Aaj jaldi, aaj jaldi. I would like to thank all team uh, for their hard work. Thank you so much for making this event wonderful. We'll keep on interacting. Thanks to all of you. Two words from our president. It was a nice seminar, what I feel. I think all are happy. And uh, the stay at the uh, hotel also is fine, I think. And thanks to Sir Vasudevan, sir. he was our guiding force along with Alok and uh, Prasanna, Prasanna ji. And uh, of course Sanjay is a master brain behind all these things along with the whole group, young group. Thanks a lot. Thank you sir, thank you. Sir. I request all of you to come to the stage, we'll have a group photo with the whatever space available we will ask you.
You can start uh, living in batches. Vehicle is waiting out there. Vehicles are waiting out there for uh, to the stay. Uh, due to the limitations of the number of vehicles, we'll be doing it in uh, uh, two uh, trips. Uh, two uh, trips, so we, you can move in batches. Thank you. 